harm right. to speak of. Yep. Um, your 50 or 75 or 100 mile range for almost everybody, the interstate highway system maps our population quite precisely. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And so if you can get to an interstate on your own batteries, you can drive down the road charging and arrive at the next city with a full pop, pop top off, off the batteries. Off yep. Um, if you want to pass somebody on the road, just do one lane like this. If you want to pass or, or whatever, you just pull out off of the buried rail and mm -hmm. use your batteries and drive a mile or two and then get back in the lane. All right. Uh, it would be very practical. Mm -hmm. uh, it opens the door to some things you know, like um, steering and cruise control. Right. Uh, data transmission yep. uh, through that link. So you drive down a road, you know, um, read, watch an EV TV or something on the on the screen, and um, and then when you get there, you arrive with a fully charged pack to go wherever you need to go in the in the foreign town. That's uh, a long way out in the future. Uh, if I'm driving a long distance, I like the Escalade. Yep. <laughs> uh, 10, 10 miles per gallon, but it blows cold air up my keister, and I'm sitting on about two feet of upholstery. You know, That's up right. High. Up high. I like that. Uh, I'm not into giving up anything. This electric car thing is to, uh, there's a technology play to win. It's not about suffering for the good of the planet. I fall right out of bed with right. those people. Um, there's some ways we can fix stuff uh, without having to suffer. Speaking of uh, highways, there's a guy, his name is Dean Kelb, from, uh, he's a retired Chrysler executive in Michigan. And he and a group up there are proposing something so bizarre uh, that it might actually work. It might work. <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, what, what they're talking about doing is taking uh, the old Highway 12 across Michigan and making it a greenway for electric cars, segways, bicycles, um, and so forth, neighborhood mm -hmm. vehicles, um, where, uh, although you'd be able to take a gasoline car on them, okay. but it's the old um, state highway system that predates the interstate. Uh, that highway and all of them uh, in those days were basically a grown-up version of Indian trails and horse tracks. Yeah. So there'll be a little town, about a day's horse ride, right. Right. Uh, 15, 20 miles, every 15, 20 miles would be a little town. And all those towns got bypassed when the, I got, Dwight Eisenhower um, brought out this interstate, interstate highway, highway system. Highway, sure. What was yeah. that uh, cartoon TV show? The, uh, the oh, Disney you thought the, the Disney Pixar movie Cars. Cars, yeah. yeah. Cars. Uh, they had a little red car and he winds up in Podunkville off the interstate and and trapped there. Trapped, and, that's right. I don't know, they make him repave the place or something <laughs> before they let him go, and he's trying to get to a race. And uh, But there's a very scenic side of America that you kind of bypass on the interstate highway. You get there quick, but right. you miss a you lot. You miss a lot, yes. And these little towns. Uh, these people are proposing that these become kind of greenways and be renovated. Um, and have charging stations and so forth along the way and, uh, you know, fruit stands and so <laughs> forth right. for joggers and bicyclists and so forth. Kind of like the, the rails, uh, railway uh, rideways that got converted to bike paths. Right. That sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I kind of like the idea. Um, one of the reasons is my 100-mile test track for the Sportster that we drove 107 miles. 107 miles, yes. It's from Cape Drotter to Perryville up U.S. Highway 61. All right. This is one of these highways. That was how you drove to St. Louis when I was a kid before the interstate. I expected that road to be in terrible disrepair. Would you believe it's got a complete new black top surface that's smooth as glass? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I haven't been on it for a little while. It's a very scenic drive. It's curvy and hilly, which is pretty nice for driving mm -hmm. an open-top Porsche on on a pretty fall day. And up there and back is just at 100 miles. Mm -hmm. So it's a great mm -hmm. test uh, of the car, at, not at 22 miles an hour, at, you know, 45 to 55 yeah. or 60. I might have yeah. been going 65 a couple of places. Hills, winding, um, it's, it's a joy to drive. And they had the surface of this just 
dead smooth. It's been completely redone. Yeah, I haven't been recently. on a while. Good. I'll have to go on it. No, nobody goes on nobody it. Nobody goes on it. It's in good shape. <laughs> uh, but if you were driving an electric car and wanted to go cross country, that's kind of the, the way to go. It mm -hmm. gets you out of that huge air resistance zone at 70, 75 miles an hour. And there's nobody on it. Uh, yeah. Everybody's on the interstates, yeah. Now, it's a little dangerous. you got tractors that pull out once in a while. It's unlimited access. Anybody who's got a driveway onto it. But it's, a, it's an interesting drive. So that idea has merit. There's a guy in Elkhorn, Iowa. Okay. Mike Howard. I grew up with a Mike Howard, but this isn't him. <laughs> <laughs> who is putting in six charging stations in Elkhorn. Uh, at his own okay. expense, and they're going to look like old gas pumps, like oh, our oh, charging that. station. <laughs> He's putting them in that way, six thousand bucks piece. Okay. And Elkhorn has population of six hundred and fifty, but wow. it's kind well, of okay. long Interstate eighty, and he thinks it'll cause people to come there come that are down. driving cross country in electric cars to charge there and kind of build tourism in the town. I love this sort of entrepreneurial mm -hmm. thing. When I see uh, Nissan and the government getting together to put charging stations all over Tennessee and California, I mean, you know, you have to like the sentiment, but they right. don't even have a standard for the plugs yet. No, what are they I don't know. About? I don't know what. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just uh, dumb and dumber <laughs> sometimes. When you see an individual putting down $36,000, put this in, bring tourism into his town, I'm like, you know, some of those are going to make it, and some, some of them right, aren't. But right. that's the way you build this stuff out. Right. You know, all uh, the ideas right now. Right. And right. some guys are going to get out there earlier and get creamed, and others are going to get out there and make a fortune. But it isn't really going to be the government. Um, no. <laughs> either way. So that's kind of the news I've got. What I've been working on this week, Brain. All right. Is DC to DC converters. All right. We've been putting them through their paces. This is just a, uh, this should be the simplest thing in an electric car. And okay. it's just been, we've wrestled with this more than anything. This is an IOTA DLS 55. We originally the first, put. Yeah, first one we used. It, this is a charger really. You put 120 volts AC in. You're supposed to get 12 volts out to charge a battery. Yeah. Well, Something a lot of people don't know is that uh, most of these things don't really have transformers in them. They, uh, most of the AC devices have little bridge rectifiers, an increasingly mm -hmm. semiconductor type thing. So if you put 120 volts DC in a 120 volt AC uh, device, it just sees 120 volts. Right. It doesn't know that it's, it just goes through one half of the bridge rectifier and you still have 120 volts. So you could put 120 volts DC on this and take 12 volts out the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, this thing is supposed to be rated from 108 to 190 volts, 55 amps. Yep. And it starts a little high at 14 volts. Uh, we put it in a car. It was over 200 bucks when we got it. All right. It. right. What was the price we I paid think, for? I think it was 212 Yeah. They're down to 188.88, and this thing, in the first place, I didn't like it because it's got this metal case that's open to the weather. Yeah. yeah. If you take it apart, the components are just laying in there. They're barely attached, and they're not conformal coated or any kind of uh, um, thing to protect them. Uh, but worse, oh, we put this on the car, and it wouldn't do the trick. I couldn't figure out why. No. Put it on the bench, uh, here's why. <laughs> Over about 15 amps, the voltage dives below 12 volts. Not good. And, you know, <laughs> you're trying to keep the car and all the stuff going. Everything's getting dim on you. This is the most gutless thing I've ever uh, encountered in that thing. So we've been playing with stuff. What we put in the uh, Speedster was a little module I made out of these Vicor bricks. These things are DC to DC converters by themselves. You have to hook up wiring to them, switches, lights. Put it, you have to mount this on a heat sink so it can dissipate some heat. Um, so there's some work building these. But it's pretty simple work. They're just little bricks. Little bricks um, yeah. the, the problem was uh, for the Speedster, we had a volt, 
voltage of about 120 volts. New ones from Vicor, uh, these things are about 275 bucks a piece. Right. So we've got five, 600 bucks just in the bricks, mm -hmm. plus the heat sink and everything on a kind of a homemade mm, DC to DC converter. Um, we're doing the same thing on the Mini, and it's made, I've made a whole homemade converter with a heat sink and this, and four of these uh, 350 watt output right. modules. Um, they take 300 volts in. The 300 volt to, to 12 volts are quite commonly available on eBay for 20 or 30 bucks a piece. All right. That's Apparently they use them, them yeah. in computers and stuff, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of them surplus. And so you make a DC to DC converter out of these. You got to put it on a heat sink, put a fan, put an enclosure. There's some work to it. 